Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. In red, that says Alex. In the yellow, it says the Ramble. This is Alex with the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, this here is Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Bubs. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? We well, also yeah, okay. Just uh, we were talking that uh, had a little dental thing, but uh, yes. as someone someone yeah. said, let's see. As you get as you when you hit sixty, it's one thing. When you when you hit seventy, it's just everything's there's a cascade of misfortune physically. <laughs> well, I you know I'm, I, I you know what I have I have these uh, weird weird things. I have uh, I'm sti- it's cold right now, so I'm very stiff. You know, and I'm sitting mm-hmm. here, uh, um, you know, I get up, I go, Ugh, you know, and I'm kind of crawling at a slower speed around the apartment. You know, it, it's, it's just, it just, uh, I, I go back uh, to, um, and it was reported that this was said by uh, Betty Davis, getting old ain't for sissies, you know, and it's true. That's a great quote. Yeah, yeah. it's true. I mean, you're hitting what now? You're... I'm 70, yeah. You're 70. Yeah. Well, you're only yeah. 14 years younger than I am. You're in what I call you, the the death region. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, I don't know how to describe it better than that. But every day I wake up and I go, I'm about to be 84, right? And I go, wow, I'm That's 84? Incredible. You know. This is ridiculous, you know. Um, I made it this far, and um, I'm kind of becoming the Norman Lear of radio, you know. So it, it's just. Well, I talked to a high school friend, and he's at my age, and he said he was going to get a dog, and then he realized, oh my God, the dog's probably going to outlive me. Well, so that, he, that, he I, won't, I won't get a cat for that reason. Marjorie wants a cat, and I say two reasons we don't get a cat: like we're going to do some traveling soon. And uh, who takes care of the cat? We don't have anybody to take care of the cat. And secondly, I don't want that cat looking at me every day going, you know, I'm going to be here long after <laughs> you're gone. You know, so. But I, I don't, you know, I mean, I, I, I wake up every morning and I go, well, st- still not at room temperature. I guess it's okay, you know. And then I try to get out of bed. I I, I, you know, I do, uh, I do fifty sit-ups every morning now. Really? But that's how many that's times good. it takes me to get out of bed. You see? <laughs> so, so anyway, how you been otherwise? Well, well, at least you didn't play. I was reading that guys that play professional football, the linebackers, they they get hit so hard. They said by the time they're fifty, they actually have a hard time getting out of bed. I uh, Chevy Chase said that you know every week for thirteen weeks while he was on Saturday Night Live, and that's only how long he was on Saturday Night Live. He used to take that pratfall, you know. And oh yeah, say, uh, it's it's sad. It's live. It's Saturday night. They never said Saturday Night Live because that was a show that Howard Cosell had over on ABC. It was originally just called Saturday Night, you know. Uh, and, and Saturday night, and we're live, you know. Uh, so anyway, he said that he, because of all those falls, by the time he was 50, he couldn't get out of bed every morning. But it took him, you know, eight tries because he was, every bone was aching just from yeah. those, pr- just from 13 weeks of Pratt falls. So it, probably I can only imagine like how Buster Keaton must have felt. <laughs> Buster Keaton. What I'll tell you what happened to Buster Keaton. He did one stunt. I could even show it to you if I had the film, in which he was uh, uh, he was on a uh, one of those water towers that 
the thing comes out and puts water in the train, you know, so that it can cool the engine or whatever it does. And so part of the stunt was he, that thing comes out, he's hanging on it. And then the water starts gushing out and he falls. Well, the water hit him with such force that he fell to the ground and he said, oh, my neck's killing me, you know. And it was killing him for a couple of weeks and so on. So now it's years later and he goes in for an examination and he uh, he was asked by the doctor, so when was it you broke your neck? <laughs> wow. I mean, he went that far. He broke his neck. So, um, uh, you know, and if anybody wants to see some the greatest stunts ever done in movies, go watch Buster Keaton. Oh, the best. That, uh, the one where that the house falls over him and he's... He... <laughs> The, the door. He comes through the door. <laughs> they, you know how they did that? They had the door on, on hinges that were pretty solid and steady so that the, the thing wouldn't move either way. And then they lowered it, and he stood right where the doorway was. And then they lifted it back up, and he just stood in that spot and hoped and prayed that when it came down, it came down just <laughs> right. But that's one of the greatest stunts in movies. And uh, he he did all manner of stunts. I think the greatest visual gag he ever did is he and his wife build this house. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, a kit that's sent to you with all the parts for a house, and you put the house together. And, of course, they put it together so it looks really weird, right? So now they've got it, they've got a car, and they're pulling it, and they hit a railroad track, and the car separates from the, uh, from the uh, house. And now the car is sitting on a railroad track, and they suddenly realize that now they're on either side of it, and occasionally they're trying to push it, but it won't move, and it won't move. And finally, um, here comes a train, and you can see it coming down behind the house, and it keeps coming and keeps coming and keeps coming, and then it turns out it's on another rail and it just goes right by the house. <laughs> and they have this big sigh of relief, and then another train comes from another direction and wipes the house out. Of course. <laughs> now, those were great gags, by the way. I mean, just... Fantastic. Like but... uh he uh, he really did a lot of stunts. He got hurt, you know. But he he in all the documentaries I see of him, they don't say that in later life he had a hard time getting out of bed or whatever. They never get into that. But I'm sure, you know, he had all kinds of pains from all kinds of uh, disasters that befell him. But I don't know. I don't know how old he was when he died. Hold on a second, uh, Echo. How old, Echo, how old was Buster Keaton when he died? Well, it's being snarky today. Echo, how old was Buster Keaton when he died? Buster Keaton died at 70 years old in 1966 in Los Angeles, California. Okay. His cause of death was lung cancer. Oh, he died of lung cancer. He was a smoker. Yeah, I remember. Really? He, yeah, but 70 years old. So he never got to the point where he would say, boy, am I having a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. You know, so anyway, that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's my story on Buster Keaton. Did, uh, did he make a fortune or not? Oh, when he was in his prime in silent films and he owned all his pictures and he had complete control over his films... He was one of the wealthiest people in Hollywood. But then oh, okay. he lost it all to a thing called divorce. And it was a terrible thing. I mean, he, he wound up not having a penny. He owned one of the biggest mansions in, uh, in uh, Hollywood. Uh, he, was, he was very wealthy, very wealthy, and very successful. Um, I would say financially almost as successful as... Uh, Charlie Chaplin, just that Charlie Chaplin really had a worldwide fan base 
And, uh, you know, I mean, I always preferred uh, Keaton to Chaplin. You know, I realized Chaplin's greatness, and there was an elegance about what he did, but uh, it really wasn't wasn't that good, you know, uh, I, I think. I think Keaton was brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. Charlie Chaplin was a one-thing act, you know. There was this little tramp and blah, 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 and that's it, you know. Everybody loved the tramp because they loved Mickey Mouse. So, anyway. You know what I forgot to bring in here is liquid. Oh, well, we'll keep going. When we take a break, we'll, I'll go get liquid. You can't dehydrate. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, if I don't have liquid, I'm starting to spit out of the front of my mouth. You know, these are old people things. I'm an old person. <laughs> I'm an old. I'm an old man. You know. Do you think of yourself? Eighty. Do you realize you're seventy? I don't. Yeah, I don't feel that way. But I guess I am. It's. Uh... Oh, eighty was okay for me. You know, I don't think I started having problems of any amount till I hit eighty. You know, and then I'm really in the death zone. You should ask Echo what the average life expectancy of an American male is. I thought it was 78. but I thought it went down. It has gone down in the past couple of years. Okay, wait a minute. Echo, what's the average age of a... Uh, stop. Uh, Echo, stop. What do we want to ask it? What, uh, what's the average... The average age? life expectancy oh, oh, okay, of an American okay. male. Echo, what's the life expectancy... Of an American male. The average life expectancy in the United States is 79 years. It's the average life expectancy, but you didn't, she didn't let me finish. Echo, what's the average life expectancy of a male? Echo, what is the life expect? Now she's not reacting to me. Echo! What is the average life expectancy of an American male? The average life expectancy of an American male mm -hmm. is around 76 years. 76 years for males. So, yeah, oh, okay. So it has gone down. Yeah, it's always, it's always higher for women. And, and yeah. It's they don't true. complain about that. Because Marjorie has a whole bunch of friends, okay, who are her, her age because they went to school with her, right? I don't think any of them have a husband. I think one of them has a husband who's still alive. You know, so I'm lucky, you know. Uh, so we'll see, you know. I'm throwing that. Well, that's a life expectancy. I mean, some males die at 20. You know, so that's a life expectancy. But if you make it to a certain, if you make it to my age, I think uh, I'm on borrowed time. <laughs> that's what I'm on. But it is a scary thing to think about. Well, it is, but you know, I got it's a it's a uh, it's an adventure I've yet to do. I guess you know, I I don't you know I fear death. You do too. You you're the same way. Oh yeah. Uh, we both fear death like crazy. Uh, and um, so that, that's, you know, what the hell, you know? It's uh, it's something you have to look forward to. You know, nobody gets out of this world alive. And we are given so many years on Earth, and we should use them probably well. Do you think you've used your life well so far? I mean, if you died tomorrow, well, they say, well, he had a good life. Uh, I don't think I wouldn't have a lot of regrets, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be I, I did okay. I what are didn't you? have to work too hard, so uh, <laughs> yes, right. That, which was a primary goal of getting into comedy. I was just well, uh, you, you do you do no manual labor. <laughs> Excuse me. You do know manual yeah. labor. You know. Yeah. That's what Jim Samuels used to say about stand-up comedy. When people will complain. He goes, hey, there's no heavy lifting here. There's no heavy lifting at all. Well, how about me with radio? 
No heavy lifting. I don't. People say, um, how long did you work? I said, I never worked a day in my life. You know, and I can't say I did. What did we do? We went in every morning in San Francisco, and we just had fun for four hours, and then we left and went home. Yeah, if not work, if you're enjoying it. Well, it's, it, that, that's why anybody who works should enjoy what they're doing. And I mean, exactly. That doesn't mean that if you have some heavy man, you know, labor, that that can't be enjoyable. I've had, I've known people who were into heavy labor and loved it. Oh yeah. You know, so I mean, love what you're doing. If you don't love what you're doing, go find something else to do. That's what I say. And that's what I say at almost 84, having lived a long life. All right? Yeah. I, there was well, you a, got into one of the greatest businesses ever. What? You got into one of the greatest businesses ever. I, I did? Oh, no. No, no. I think yours is a better business. I mean, um, radio, I don't think there was ever a period of time in my life in radio that I didn't have to fight over something. You know, because you had a business that was run by salesmen, because people who became general managers had been salesmen, and then you've got yourself doing a show, and you are a talent. And it was very hard to deal with people who didn't understand talent. To them, talent. Was yeah, just, I thought it was the consultants that ruined the radio more than the uh, salesmen, right? Because they're. He always giving you shitty advice about what well, to do with the, the show. And. Well, the consultants were another breed, okay? And there were some good consultants, I'll have to say. Those were the ones that thought I was terrific. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, consultants didn't run radio stations. The general managers did, and most of them came out of sales. And um, that kind of person doesn't normally understand talent. Uh, I'll tell you, the one guy that did understand talent was Mel Carmazan, who ran Sirius XM while I was there, for the most of the time I was there. When he was gone, I was then gone. In fact, I felt that. The minute he left, I felt that my days were numbered. But he loved talent. But he just lorded over salespeople. He just gave them the worst time in the world. You know, uh, but he loved talent, and it was true. Where I was working at Sirius XM, I, I never heard a word about what to do on my show until he left, and then all of a sudden it was, don't you think you should do this? And don't you think you should do that? And blah 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 blah, you know. And then one day I get that call into the office, and they go, "Well, we we have something unpleasant to tell you." <laughs> yeah, right. But it's not right. your fault. Well, then whose fault is it, I, you know, I would say. And they answer back, uh, but if we don't know, but it's you, not your fault, you know. <laughs> so where did he, did he just retire? He, um, I think he quit, or they, there was some, le I think he was almost forced to leave. And he saved the company, you know. But um, Amel was the guy who who went to bat for Howard Stern against the FCC, you know. Uh, he uh, Howard Stern's career would not be what it is without Mel Carmison. And I always feared the guy, but when I finally worked for him, I suddenly found out he was the opposite of everything I had ever heard. Mm. And I turned down a job once because it was with a Mel Carmison station. Um, and that was when I got flown out to Washington and wined and dined. And I, I figured they just wanted to get me out of San Francisco so Howard Stern could move in. You know, that I was the only thing between Howard Stern and success in San Francisco. So, uh, yeah, that, that was that, you know. But I... Uh, you know, I've I've had to fight every inch when, in radio. You know, uh, hell, I used to have a meeting every day with the program director at Live One Hundred Five. It was a required meeting where we sit down and he would like tear apart the show and say what was wrong and what was right and so on. And one day I said, "Don't you feel this is all useless?" 
He said, why? <laughs> I said, when's the last time you can remember me ever paying attention to what you've told me? <laughs> he said, well, never. And I said, then you should also think, uh, you know, what happened is it happened to me at, um, at Sirius. They should have a meeting with me every day. And probably one day the program director said, why should I have a meeting with you? You're the talent, and you're, so you've are you been a successful talent over the years. You know better than me what to do. So let's not have these meetings anymore. Well, that's cool. And I felt that was okay. But yeah. I used to have meetings every day with Richard Sands, and I like the guy, you know. But it was just, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm successful, getting you good ratings, all of that. Why do we have to have this meeting? You know, so. That was the, uh, the the crux of it, but I, I've had to fight, you know, constantly, and and uh, been fired several times by stations that didn't understand what I was doing, you know, or it seemed so easy that they didn't think I was actually working. Uh, but it's uh, oh. you know, I kind of said that radio is like uh, anal sex. The hard part is making it look fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, your sh your show pulled in so much money in one morning. It was uh... yeah, I made a lot of money for that radio station. Uh, it was amazing how much. And now do you I think... heard it was the mo I heard the ra ad revenue per day on your show was uh, they pulled in thirty six to forty thousand. Really? Well, yeah. And that was in uh, what? Uh, mm. That's twenty years, twenty five years ago. Twenty five years ago, they put that in today's money. It's a lot more, but if I made at least that, double, yeah, you know, I was making them a couple of thousand. You're making a week. them a fortune. Yeah, a couple of hundred thousand a week. Yeah, I didn't know I was. Where'd you hear that? I never heard that. Somebody told me that at the station. Yeah. So. Oh really? They never came to me and said, "Alex, you're a good wage earner." You know, you make us you know, thirty thousand dollars a day. I'd go, what? You know, I didn't know it was that much. But then again, I never wanted anything for making them a lot of money, except when we went into contract negotiations, and then I wanted my fair share. That's all. You know, but I was doing it because you hired me to do a job, and I'm doing it, and you're reaping the rewards of that. But uh, I, I was making good money. I should have made, I think, better money. But, you know, we, what we did is, you know, remember those live reads I used to do? Yeah. On a contract renegotiation, we made a deal where every time I read one of those, I had to get $50. And um, they said, okay. So they would just charge the advertiser an extra $50 to have Alex Bennett do a live read, right? Uh -huh. they, they weren't losing money. So that was okay. And sometimes, some mornings I'd have four live reads. I made 200 bucks a morning doing live reads five days a week. That's $1,000 a week. That's an extra $52,000 a year. Yeah, that adds up. Yeah, it adds up. So that worked out okay. We were happy with that. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, those were the days. And then I took everybody out to lunch. And then I, uh, you know, if you were a comic and you needed a few bucks, I remember I I actually uh, co-signed a loan for a car for Bob Rubin, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah, I was just, uh, and when it was all over, I didn't have any money. You know, I had some, but not a lot. And uh, I should have had more, should have had more. You know, and then I did all the comedy shows. That was another, that brought me in another, I don't know, uh, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. So, I mean, I, I made, I was making, I was making fuck you money. That's what I was making. You know? Oh yeah. So, but now I'm sitting here on Social Security, uh, and um, you know. But I've I've got I've got a little bit I I had a little bit saved up after I came to New York I started saving I started now you I bet you save I bet you save 
I've, uh, yeah, I'm hardly rich, but I've always saved money. So Did you always put some away, a little bit away, to make sure? That... Uh, I did. Although there, were, there were some lean years there where I kind of quit, where uh, things got, had, to, had to burn through some savings. But... Yeah. Well, it, we can talk about that in your... In your okay. lean years. In my, my upcoming bio. <laughs> in your upcoming bio. Butter. That would be the name of it. <laughs> Butter. A- anyway, thank you, Larry Thanks, Bubbles Alex. Brown. We'll see you next week. Or not yeah. next week. We've got some holidays coming up. So we'll, we'll see you, though. Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was Larry Bubbles Brown. There's nobody like Larry. We love Larry. Everybody loves Larry. <laughs> everybody loves Raymond. I, I don't know. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? How you doing? What's happening? Hey, we're getting into that holiday period. Um, in fact, I got to send out a. Uh, I got to send out a, uh, a notification to all my shows that we're off for a week. Between uh, uh, Christmas and uh, New Year, we're we're off. Uh, we're not off though. I'm going to do I think a Monday show, but I'm figuring out how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a New Year's Eve show. Okay, do that about maybe eleven o'clock at night. But we'll 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 let you know about that next week. We'll figure it all out. I I haven't figured it out yet. Okay, all right. Okay, is that all right with you? All righty, I think it's time for us to go out and talk to our people on Zoom. Uh, and uh, let me bring them all in here. Oh, there are a whole bunch of them. Oh, boy, we were starting off with a, um, a, a nice bunch of people. There we go. There's Jeff, and there's Kevin, and there's Charlie, and there's Josh. We'll, we'll let you know about that next week. We'll figure it all out. Uh, right? uh, uh, you got to get... It take a get, get rid of your audio there. Yeah, All righty, I think it's time for us to go out and talk to our people on Zoom. Uh, and uh, do you have a browser up? Bring them all in here. Do you have a browser up, Jeff? What? We we're starting off with them. Get, get, okay, he did it. Well, okay. Now wait a minute. Now what? What's what's with the dog? Is, is that uh, uh, Kansas the dog? That's Brian. Oh, oh, you know, you left us last night, and we had a great closing, and you just you missed it, and then it didn't even get aired. Well, see, what happened, you know what happened? You lost power or something. Uh, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Uh, there was a massive uh, power outage in all of New York and suburbs. For a quick flash second, okay, oh. lights. The Russians testing you. Clicks, uh, clicked on and off. Their only problem with it was that nothing here changed. You know, like all my clocks stayed the way they should and everything. But I lost my computer. The computers went down. So that had to be all reset and all of that. But it We just was, saw you sitting there like this. <laughs> there was an explosion in Brooklyn. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Some, uh, some, uh, I don't know. Terrible thing. The Russians. Yeah. Uh, we, like we only see you on uh, YouTube. Oh, I see. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me zoom. There they we go. They didn't even see Kansas the dog. Jeez. Oh, well, show us Kansas the dog. Who? <laughs> what are you eating there? Well, let me, let's see that. Hold that up. <laughs> oh, let's yes. see it. No, let's see what you're eating. We want to see what you're eating. Baked potato. Is it baked potato? Really? Yeah, I had a couple of potatoes, and I just wanted had the urge for one. So occasionally, just a baked potato tastes good, right? Do you put butter on it? Put sour cream and a little ranch. Yeah, a little ranch. Yeah. Okay, sour cream is very good on there. Yeah, yeah, we don't yeah. have sour cream. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So anyway, so that was my problem last night. So if people were listening to the program uh, on. Uh, on our postings and so on, they only heard it just cut off you know, at a certain point. I didn't but, realize it until it said, you are now the host up in the corner of my 
Yeah, we could have stayed. We could have stayed on. We could have stayed oh, on. Wait, what's uh, interesting is you became the host. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's from the Saturday night thing. No, because I've never made you a host. No, Were you the but... first person? No, you weren't the first person I called in, right? What yeah, I was. So maybe yeah. that's what defaults to the next person that. Oh, boy. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, who knows what it was? Yeah. It was we, we, automatic we... co-pilot, so it wouldn't crash. What is that in the background? What is oh, what? what is that? No, but what is that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, those are two feet. I see. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She just She's on her iPad. She has headphones in, so she can't she, hear. She has to make her presence known, doesn't she? <laughs> you can hear, then you got to get out. Because <laughs> daddy's going to talk dirty. Yeah, you already did about some... Uh, you you just said... <laughs> what is that? Oh, my God. Don't say I can't right. So how long did you guys keep going after I... Got off we, last night. Two we minutes. stopped. Yeah, two because minutes, we stopped. I, I yeah. wanted to get off because I knew you had to have Amy take over the other board or whatever. So I just, no, she, I just she didn't. She, no, that wouldn't have interrupted Amy at all. Oh, I, I would have kept going then, but I saw 58, and I know you like to get off at 58, so I just shut it down. Yeah, no, the only thing, yeah. you, the only thing we have to turn down uh, here so Amy can go on is the uh, encoder for the audio. Uh, oh, and okay. then she well. automatically can just... To, you know, I know how you like to be on time, so I just but she said she all, I told everybody to if you see her, tell her I love her, and I said goodbye. Yeah, she uses an encoder called Butt. All right, I, I don't want to mess I, with her butt. Yeah, no, and it's B U T T is how it's spelled. Okay, uh, and it, yeah, I think somebody named it that because they wanted people to say, "I think your butt is down," or yeah. uh, "Take your audio and put it in your butt." Yeah. You know, but anyway, go, go so she butt. has she has butt and butt, as opposed to the encoder I have, which is a I pay for it and it's expensive, but it doesn't do what hers does. Hers is free, and what it does is if I shut down, she t starts the thing going, okay, and it's just in trying to contact, trying to contact, trying to contact. The minute I stop encoding, hers just automatically goes on. And last night she didn't know why hers was automatically going on earlier, you know. Mm. So that that was that. But you know what the hell, you know. Mm. It was it was, uh, but it was quite an adventure. I mean, it was just as like everything. It just it wasn't even a complete blackout. It wasn't like we suddenly went black and then for a while it was off and then all of a sudden they came back on. It was like bloop. But that was enough to kill my router, to kill all my computers and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But it didn't kill anything like a, a clock or a, or TV oh, yeah. sets or you know anything like that. I mean, it, just, it was amazing. It was just weird. So in Brooklyn, and something happened in Brooklyn. Uh, it was a, a a switch in Brooklyn or something blew up. Okay. So. Uh, or as they said over at Con Ed, I think there's some smoke coming out of this thing. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. it sure is. Anyway, so that was that was my little adventure last night. Thank you all for having put up with it. We we were having a great show. <laughs> Thank God this happened at eleven fifty five last night. So most of the show was over with, so we were we're fine, you know. We're good. So anyway, I found this humorous. Oh, pick a bone, the humorous. Okay. Okay. It's not exactly a uh, astrophysics joke. No. 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 Uh, anyway, so uh, here we are. Uh, hello, Josh. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm delighted today because... <laughs> what was it? Um, um, Rudolf Giuliani. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they made a judgment against him for what? A hundred and forty three million dollars? Forty eight. Forty eight, is that it? Please so, yeah. Oh yeah. I wonder what it's like to go into debt like that in fifteen minutes. <laughs> and he's broke. <laughs> yeah, he's broke. 
Those poor women aren't going to collect a dime. The first thing he said <clears throat> after this happened yeah. was, will they take a credit card? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, how do, you pay, how, how do you pay that thing off? I, you, I know. Know, you know, obviously. You sell all those buildings that he owns. No, he doesn't have anything left. They'll, they'll <clears throat> seize his assets. And what? They'll seize his assets and sell yeah. them. His house, his car. But those, uh, those black women are going to be able to buy a lot of crack with that money, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, I'm sure that's what Trump said. <laughs> They yeah, that's the thing is smoke. Trump is do Trump's done it, just as bad it. with it. Yeah, I mean, you know, smoke it, snort it, shoot it, whatever they feel like, seven days mm -hmm. a week. Pass it back and forth. And because that's what that's what black people do, right? Yeah, that, yeah right. They, they buy they buy drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and watch, you know, like Beyonce if you got if you got a hundred and was it forty eight million dollars? Yeah, right. Yeah. Let's say, and you only got half of it because the daughter gets half and the mother gets half. Oh, and the lawyer gets three three thirds. Yeah. So. Three thirds. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean three thirds? All of it? You mean? Yeah, probably. Well, yeah, the lawyer. Usually what it works out to, yeah. The, the lawyer is probably getting, if I know law well, I think something like twenty five percent. Yeah, I thought. It, yeah. It's usually two thirds. Usually, no, it's yeah. not two thirds. Never. Oh, well, that's they got from me. Oh, so. well, is that what third. they got from you? What? Oh yeah, two thirds. Two thirds. That's the old joke. Two thirds. Really? Hmm. Well, anyway, if you let's uh, yeah. let's right. say let's say now after lawyers, after taxes, yeah. you've got what seventy five million a piece? No, wait a minute. No, that wouldn't be right. You got maybe fifty million a piece. Yeah. What would you do with the fifty million? I'd probably sue Rudolph Giuliani again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how much money they'll ever actually. Yeah. Yeah. I but, I don't know. think they're sitting around um, uh, counting the cash. Okay. You no, know, but what it does is, you know, I think obviously, I mean, I don't I'm not. A, lawyer on finance or whatever but i believe you know obviously they'll seize his assets and sell things off to to do it and all that and i know there's some legal you know guidance about how they have to leave you uh, you know i think enough to live or whatever and your lawyers argue that out but then you know i think that will attach to like future assets too or what you know what yeah. i'm saying so like for example, a year and a half or two years from now, if he writes some tell-all book and gets a $10 million advance or whatever, I think they just say, oh, here you go. We're well, going to give that to these uh, black ladies that you owe money, you know? Yeah. yeah. Another handout for the black community. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it... it uh, you know, but, but I'm I'm not sure, but I'm, I mean, I believe that, you know, it doesn't really doesn't really expire. It's not as if they go through it and take a little bit and then they do away with it. They... You know, I think he's he, he's going to owe it, you know, until they reach some other settlement or he, he pays it, which he probably can't. So that's what I'm saying. If he decides to write some tell-all book, I don't think, you know, and gets $10 million or whatever, I think that he's not really going to get any of that money. He's going to get it and have to give it to them. So Well, he obviously is going to appeal it, you know. I'm sure. Probably. Yeah, he already said that. Yeah. yeah. Obviously. I don't to... think it'll be very successful, but. No. No. Well, I mean, it might be that they say it's a little extraordinarily high. Uh, right. I mean, you know. And but so they, I don't they, think that's going to bother them. Over. Hmm? I don't. He I went don't on know the courthouse steps. Them. Well, go ahead, Charlie. I'm sorry. I said he went on the courthouse steps right after the court and, 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 and defamed them again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> said he had all the evidence that he yeah. was right. Right. Oh boy, he's, to you know, his, his, his his emotional range is about the same as the my pillow guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically, it's the same thing, isn't it? Yes. Like he won't give up the, up the ghost. I mean, if he had said, if he'd come out, he I don't think he's ever said. Hmm. I I don't think he's ever apologized for that. Has no, he? he no. hasn't. And he hasn't ever said. Hey, I was all wrong. I'm sorry if I made your nope. life a living hell for a couple of months there, but I'm I, I really did wrong. 
he probably they probably wouldn't have even sued didn't, him. Didn't his, attor- his attorney today or yesterday or whatever uh, admit in court that he admitted that? Yeah, the attorney did, did, but not he done wrong. Not Giuliani. Well, but well to begin with, this trial wasn't about whether he was right or wrong. Oh. The judge already determined he was wrong. They were trying to determine how much the how, the, much? how, how much? much money was going to be awarded. And the jury came back and said 148 million. I, mean, you know. I, I think I think it's a bit much, and they'll never get it. But well, it it but it but it but it makes a statement. You know, it's yeah. not a bit much considering what he did. Yeah. You know, there's one thing to defame somebody, and then there's another to defame somebody and make their life a living hell because of their defamation. Right. And their life was just they had to leave their home. You know, they still can't move into a neighborhood and say who they are, you know, because there are people constantly threatening their lives. They were just working for the elections department. They were just working for the election department. That's all. No big deal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he said, well, you know, they were passing back and forth. They were passing back and forth stuff. And what it was. It was like Dopey Dopey said. Yeah. The woman said, it was my mom passing me a ginger... Uh, Breathman. candy, Beth yeah. Breathman, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was crack, crack, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> we all know that, yeah, we all know that. Well, this doesn't does this doesn't augur too well for Trump in in the Georgia. Well, he was case. saying the same thing. Huh? Yeah, he was doing the same thing, and there's no reason why they can't go well, after him too. It is another case that involves uh, claims around the election that has been lost uh, and, you know, decided by juries. These were not judges who just said, oh, but that was, you know, they can't just say it was a judge, right? You know, these were juries as well that concur yeah. with yeah. these facts. Yeah. You know, you take the Fox News case with Dominion voting and you take this one here, you know, it's just another example of... Well, Fox with Dominion completely caved and paid them whatever they wanted. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. So. But you know, it's another case involving claims around the election being stolen mm-hmm. or rigged, and you know, uh, both judges and juries have been finding those claims at a hundred percent rate as false. And the yeah, because they never show any evidence. Well, it's because they don't have any, right? <laughs> yeah. So you know. Uh, Good. You know, I honestly, I hope he ends up completely penniless. Well, you know what we're doing? We're living in an age now where you're you're kind of allowed to do this sort of thing. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, people just say anything you want to uh, using defamation. I mean, look at uh, uh, Alex Jones. Perfect example. And, And they think they can just do it and get away with it. And the fact is, you can't do it and just get away with it. And I yeah, think people being put on notice for this now kind of will stifle that kind of stuff, you know? So, Yeah, there is, there is not now and there never has been an un, absolute unlimited cap, you know, no cap on free speech. I mean, there is some regulated speech, always has been. You know? Well, you you have the freedom to speak. You right. just don't necessarily have the freedom to defame someone else. Right. And there are other forms of it. I mean, you know, you can't induce panic, and you cannot, you know, uh, call for violence in a public format and have it. You know, I mean, there's there is and always has been limitations. You know, and the courts have recognized it. And you know. Giuliani is just a a fool. I mean, I I don't think it's a big secret he's drunk most of the time. So I, yeah. I don't I don't think that he he's a, he's a well, wreck. Well, he's my a how America's mayor has fallen. Well, he's a clown. Do you, do you, you know, know there was a time I, I where know. they were praising this guy. I hope yeah. that he pawns one of those rings off his fingers for a hundred and fifty bucks, and he has to hand it right over to him. Fine with me. Oh, I think he deserves everything he got. You know. He absolutely does. Not only, only, and I'm saying because he made somebody else's life miserable by his accusations. Yep. Yeah. You know, 
uh, with if, no regard for it and, and for no purpose other than try to enrich himself by cuddling up closer to his butt buddy. Yeah. Who is I not in what else was and, and where's his, his butt bunny buddy is what? He's a billionaire, right? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's assume he is what he says he is, a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. Uh where is he to pay off this fine? To help his good friend Rudy, because if he's a billionaire, what's one hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars to him? Yeah, right. If he has it, yeah, which I would be, uh, venture yeah. to say he I doesn't. Mean, my understanding was, you know, that he Giuliani can't even pay his lawyers, and that they had to have some sort of expensive dinner at Mar-a-Lago that Trump spoke at to raise money. And that uh, he had to beg him to do that. And I guess he finally gave in just to shut him up. Hmm. You know, so, I, I mean, <laughs> look, Giuliani's gotten, I mean, I, I literally, I mean, I won't, my eyes won't even glint with a tear over any of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean I just, I, I don't care. I mean. Well, you know, I've <laughs> talked to people here in New York over the years who have, been a, quite familiar with Giuliani yeah. and uh, also his pal, the former uh, what, police chief of New York, uh, yeah. Bernard, Bernard Carrick. Bernard Carrick. And, and this particular person that I talked to said, these, I said, are they, are they crooked? And she says, are you kidding me? <laughs> she said, these are two of the crookedest people around. And, you know, I mean, this is a guy who everybody lauded. Oh, he's such a wonderful guy, this Giuliani. All because he did do one good thing. When the buildings were coming down in New York City, he got on TV every day for an hour or so and just tried to calm everybody down. Did a great job. And he did a great job of that. There's, I'm never <laughs> going to deny that that wasn't a great... He wrote the textbook on how to handle a situation like that. Yeah. Uh, but after, but of course, there were things like uh, he stored all the gasoline uh, for the uh, what was it for the uh, 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 you know for like in case you have an emergency, an emergency gasoline thing. He stored it in World Trade Center nine. When people told him, "Don't put it there, put it in Brooklyn," right? And no, he put it there. You know, no. so I mean, there was a lot of stuff about Giuliani that was screwed up during that whole situation. But well, the one you know. thing he did was his public persona was one of of keeping the, the public calm. And I thought he, I, I've seen the tapes of that. He did a, an amazing job. Yeah, you know? I mean, he's on his way to, you know, being homeless. Maybe I don't know. Hopefully. Well, I think somewhere they they say people say, what happened to Giuliani? What happened to him? between then and now, and most people that I know say, no, that's the old Rudy Giuliani. You know, yeah, that's not a new Rudy. Yeah, I I think maybe it's the same person that he's always been. Mm -hmm. He just was able to hide it a long time ago, and, you know, like I said, he's drunk all the time anymore, so he probably isn't as good at it as he used to be. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's... So, it, if I thought I could get the satisfaction of sending him $10 so that he had to turn around and hand it to them, I would fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, Rudy, here. Let's start a fund for Rudy. Anybody got a dollar? But yeah, you know, he's a jerk. You know, I mean... I got a dollar here. If you got $148 million more, I can take care of his bill. Or four, I mean, he's a jerk, and he's, and he's just so naive because he thought that he could just hitch on to this Trump wagon, and it was going to take him to fame and but power. But Trump and has fortune. done nothing for him. I mean, as I say, <laughs> if Trump is a billionaire, he could write him yeah. a check for this, for this money tomorrow and say, here, Rudy... Thanks for being in my corner. Now I'm in yours. And I mean, and he's, he, he sunk to the bottom of Trunk Lake like a brick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 he, j he literally jettisoned him the second that he yep. didn't really need him anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Done that with everybody. Right. 
Trump's I mean, we can't be that we can't be that far away from Trump saying, uh, 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 "Rudy Giuliani." I barely knew him. Yeah, I met him a few times. It was just get, getting coffee for the office. Yeah, I make I, I meet yeah. a lot of people. You know, I, I mean, think, you know, I think at one point he said he was never my lawyer. Right. You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying is, I mean, we're we're we can't be that far away from that point. You know, I mean, I I only met him a few times, or <laughs> you know, I, I mean. <laughs> What's I mean, his you, name again? You, you want right. to talk yeah. about ruining yeah. his reputation? Ruining his reputation? Just standing out in front of that. Uh, what was it? A garden shop? Oh yeah, that landscaping. <laughs> landscaping. Landscaping. Yeah. It was. It was a Four Seasons corn shop landscaping. On the other side. Well, yeah. he thought That's he was going. He was shop. holding it at the Four Seasons restaurant, but he yeah. was holding it the Four Seasons landscaping. Uh, and uh, that, isn't that the one where the uh, sw the dye sweat came hair down dye. The side his hair dye is dripping? Yeah. <laughs> no, that was I mean, a that was like, a press conference. I mean, oh, you know, if you if his publicist was a homeless fucking crack addict, they probably could have done better than that. I mean, I, I mean. Who runs these things? I, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's just... And if, think, even if you made that mistake, even if you made that mistake and you Google that you drive up and you say, you guys, this is the wrong place, right? Might wanna... Why would you still do it? I but wait like, a minute, but so hold, embarrassing. On, hold on a second. You know, the thing is that, that Trump at that point, I think, was really losing his mind. Yeah. He lost the election and he couldn't take it. You know, he mm -hmm. couldn't say, well, four years from now, I'll get the nomination again, and we'll beat the pants off Joe Biden, okay? And then just disappear off into the woods for another three years and then come ahead and do something, right? But no, he couldn't do that, nope. you know? And that's what the problem was. Um, didn't help. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it didn't yeah. help his mindset, and they've been acting this way ever since. I yeah. mean, it's ridiculous, but... Yeah. So, I mean, it's good to see that, you know, the systems in place do function and are working. They just take a long time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, slowly but surely, a lot of the people around him have been <clears throat> dark crimes or are in jail or have been sued and lost. And, you know, it's slowly but surely that America trudges on. But he's the ever-looming threat. So we're mm -hmm. not done. We're not done yet. Because now, if you want to, if you floating around, and so is Giuliani. If you want to talk about major fuck ups, um, the Israeli army has got to take the cake. <laughs> yep. Today, I, did you all hear about this? Yep. Yeah. The Israeli army killed three of the hostages by accident. I don't understand how people don't see that happening. They probably have killed more that they don't know of. Well, you know, and where did it, the news come from that they killed three of them? I'm I'm going to say Hamas? this now. You know, you know, there, there has been a rise in anti-Semitism not only here, oh, but here in the too. in the rest of the world. Oh yeah. And do you know who has caused that? Uh, Hamas. Yes. No, 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 no. Benjamin Netanyahu has caused that. If Hamas had not fired, fired those missiles into Israel, For, it would I'm, be... I understand, but that's a separate issue. The fact is that by his actions, I don't like Benjamin Netanyahu. Netanyahu has managed to create that climate of anti-Semitism. Okay. Yeah. You know? I'll agree. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. But it is amazing that this precision army that Israel has goes mm -hmm. down and kills three of the hostages. Oh, whoops. You know, we accidentally killed. And then they kind of go like, and we're sorry. Benjamin Netanyahu goes, we're very sorry. Yeah, they admitted they did it, Alan. That's how come we know they killed three hostages, because they admitted they did but it. But they probably have killed more. I know, they probably, yeah, they probably when they were doing all that bombing, they probably killed a bunch. Absolutely, I agree. Oh, then they're going to flood the tunnels where the hostages are. That's a good idea. You know. Well, we don't, we don't know that. We don't know that the hostages are there. Yes, well, no, they, were, they said they were there. Yeah. Who's they, they there? Got released, I, you don't read the news, that. do you? I, I don't. I, you, I listen to the news very little. 
Yeah, well, they, they, they all the, the hostages that came out said they were being kept in those tunnels. They were being kept in rooms that were created in the tunnels. So. And then they said they were flooding the tunnels with seawater, right? They were going, yeah, yeah they were starting to. Yeah, well, great. they're short on fresh water there, so. That'll help. I'll help that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, what a crazy world we live in, huh? That's for sure. Well, one thing that we always forget about, all of these people who, are, who live in Israel, Jewish people, they went there well, because not, not they... Just Jew, not those... just women, not just Jewish people live in Israel, okay? I know that. Yeah. But the, the reason that Jews went there is because they couldn't go anyplace else. They couldn't get into England. They couldn't get into the United States. No, they yeah, couldn't. We no wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They could after the war, and that was after the war. Israel wasn't formed till after the war. That's, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a lot of Jews did come over here after the war. But we weren't taking Jews in during the war when we should have been taking them in. That's the crime, you know. Um, then again, I'm Jewish, and I, you know, I don't know if I want a Jew living next door to me, but that's another story <laughs> altogether. You know, they constantly complain about their health, and they, oh, well, anyway. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, it, it's just, it, it's, it's uh, you know, I mean, I feel sorry for any of the people in Israel who were affected by this, by Hamas. But there were only 1,200 hostages taken. Uh, wait a minute, not even 1,200 hostages. Yeah. They, they were, they were two, what, 250 hostages at most? Yeah, and then the rest were of the 12, of 1,200 or so were people who got killed. Mm -hmm. Well, it, look at what has happened to Gaza. Look what's happened to Palestinians in that area most of which didn't even want anything to do with Hamas. They just had to live with them because they were running the, the, the game down there, you yep. know, like a mob would run a neighborhood. Uh, and uh, th these were innocent people. And when you say, well, they weren't that innocent, well, there were 4,500 of them so far by, by uh, reliable estimates were children. Yep. Okay, so how do you excuse that? You know, what you do is if you want to go in there, you do it with great care to make sure to just kill the right people you went in to kill. You know. The problem is those children, children shouldn't have voted for Hamas 15 years before they were born. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Well, it was their parents' fault. You know. Well, they voted in Hamas in, uh, what was it, 2012, I think it was? 2007, I think. Seven, seven or seven, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And by a couple of years later, they knew they'd made a big mistake, but then when they tried to hold more elections to get rid of them, they wouldn't let them hold the elections. Nope. So really, they were as much victims as, 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 as Israelis were. Sounds like Donald Trump, doesn't it? Well, Donald Trump's another situation altogether. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I think that America is going to, in the next election, vote out democracy. Yeah, I think he'll win. He wins, yeah. But that's voting out democracy. Yes. Because absolutely. he's going to, he, he said it already. Yep. You know, it's not like he's lying. He's made campaign, he's going to be the first uh, politician to make campaign promises that he keeps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, be a yeah. dictator on day one. What happens on day two? You're gonna not be a dictator anymore? I'm gonna get even with all those people. I'm gonna That's sit the Justice talking. Department on them. I'm gonna close down MSNBC. I mean, come on, you morons out there if you vote for this guy you're voting to get rid of our democracy period yeah and when it happens you know don't blame the people like myself who tried to warn you maybe you should blame me because i haven't been able to convince you but come on you know come up with a better candidate i saw some woman on television today i was i was yelling at my tv screen <laughs> who said i'm a very good christian 
She's like Christian, Christian fundamentalist. And Donald Trump is here to save the Christian faith. Holy shit. Jesus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, do you really believe that? I mean, I, I think their ministers in the South are preaching to them and telling him vote for Trump. Well, ma'am, if he had a chance, he'd he's probably the next coming of Christ. Yeah, if if he had, ma'am, if he had a, ma if he had a, ch a chance, he'd like to uh, pat you on your Christian pussy. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. give me a break. You know, I mean, this this kind of mentality out there that's going. You know, it's just, it's absurd. It's absurd. Um. Now they're starting to have a race out here for uh, George Santos's seat. It's going to be in uh -huh. February. The election is going to be in February. Yeah. Uh, and so they, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know? is, is he doing? I saw in the news where he's doing these uh, cameo birthday wishes and yeah, stuff. Cameo. Yeah, yeah. He said he's already made more in his year, yearly salary in Congress. This guy's a lying clown. Yeah, hope, yeah, well, wait I a minute, wait a minute. Help. Uh, tell me how that differs from most of the politicians in Washington. <laughs> well, that's a good Part of his job. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't be too critical of, of Santos because if he, if he is dishonest, a, a leech, a liar, uh, all of those things, so are his compatriots in Congress. You know, what yep. makes them so wonderful? You know, to begin with, I never felt they should have kicked him out. Hell, he's got, what, a year left? Let him serve it out. Then they can hold their election and get rid of him. He wasn't going to run again anyway, he said. Well, we didn't know that. Well, he said it, but we don't know if he was going to run well, again. Well, if he was going to run again, he could try, but he would never get the nomination in his district, in his home yeah. district. You know? Yeah, well. I mean, if anybody in his home, if, if in his home district they voted for him, that's what they deserve, okay? Yeah. But, uh, you know, so anyway, what else is happening in the news? Anybody, uh, you know, oh, I'll tell you, I came up with a thought about something. Do anybody remember chlorophyll? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How I got most of my dates when I was younger. <laughs> how, how was that? By, 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 I was going to say something like that. Put it in a rag and, uh, you know. Have no, no that's chloroform. <laughs> oh, chlorophyll. Oh, you're talking about the, the green stuff. Okay. You did mean that as a joke, didn't you? Yeah, okay, good. good. Uh, <laughs> no, but chloroform, a uh, chlorophyll. <laughs> remember chlorophyll? You remember how uh, the theory was it was like grass, right? It was like the green stuff that's in grass. Yeah. And the, I guess people said, did you ever find a, know a sheep with bad breath? You know? And people go, well, not really, no. And they go, oh, okay. Well, see, what happens is you, you, you chew the chlorophyll in gum and it'll clean out your breath. Oh, but wait a minute. We're going to start putting chlorophyll in your insoles in your shoes to keep your feet from stinking. And it became this big thing where everything came with chlorophyll. Yeah. Right? Well, artificial intelligence is the new chlorophyll. <laughs> it's like they use it for everything now. I get I get email. Oh, try the new Adobe this. It's got uh, AI in it, you know. And oh, hey, try uh, try the new uh, 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 Microsoft Word with AI. <laughs> I'm going, geez, Almighty. You know mm -hmm. how is it AI? I have no idea. So I mean, the the, the AI is the new chlorophyll. No question in my mind about <clears throat> it. And uh, it's... Uh, I, you huh? have an iPhone, right, Alex? Yeah. You've been using AI for years. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Somebody came <laughs> up with this, though, and it's a good idea. Um, uh, it, it, is AI a good term for it? How about alternative intelligence? <laughs> really, think about it. It is AI. Yeah, it, Trump intelligence. No. Now, listen, I, you know, I... I wrote a spot here. Well, I didn't write it. Actually, I had AI write it. Yeah. You want me to play it for you? Let's see if you can hear it. Yeah. If you can hear it, let me know if you can hear it. All right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so l listen to this and see what you think. Uh, this thing was completely written by AI. Get ready for an exhilarating ride through the realms of news, politics, and it? trivia. It's time to meet at the intersection with your host, Amy Manuel. Hello, fellow explorers of the intellect. I'm Amy Manuel, and I'm here to guide you through the intersection of liberal politics, breaking news, pop culture, and trivia. It's not just a show, it's an intellectual adventure. Every Wednesday through Friday at midnight, join Amy as she dissects the latest in liberal politics, giving you insights that go beyond the headlines. But that's not all. Prepare your mind for a trivia challenge like no other. Amy's expertise will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. I don't want this to be a one-way street. Call in, share your thoughts, take on the trivia challenge. The intercession is a space for all voices and all perspectives. So, mark your calendar and set your browser to the intersection every Wednesday through Friday at midnight. Amy Manuel is your guide at the crossroads of information and entertainment, only on GabNet. That's now, really good. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Wow. Did you did That's you crazy. feed it? It sounded like Steve Fox's voice. It was Steve Fox's <laughs> was. voice. He was reading the script that AI wrote. Oh, okay. Yeah. So was she. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing was was. Uh, I think Steve said he changed a few words, and that was about okay. it. That was about it. But that it, it, when I when I set out to do some spots for for Amy, I said I'll I'll throw her name into you know the AI program and see what it spits back. And it spit it back as soon as I hit send. It pretty much started <laughs> writing it. Uh, the only thing it added, it said, put some applause in here and put some sound of uh, traffic here, and whatever, and I didn't do any of that, okay? But I got this thing back. And I looked at it and kind of dismissed it for a moment, and then I started looking at it again. And I had just written the other spot that I did that Steve uh, read. You didn't hear that one. And, and I said, this thing's better than the thing I wrote. You know, what do you think? Do you think it was a well-written spot? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thought. Amazing. Just amazing. So I, uh, that's, that's AI for you, right? Mm -hmm. The new chlorophyll, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I haven't found any personal use for it. I'm not really sure what the, you know, big, uh, you know what people are dying to have it for or whatever i mean i get like industry and things like that but i you know get down to like an individual level or whatever i haven't you know wanted it even or cared for it or whatever i, I know that i read articles in some of the you know publications that i get for organizations that i'm a member of you know like the American Historical Association or the mm -hmm. Organization of American Historians and them. And every every month when they send out all their uh, journals and newsletters and those things, uh, for the last six, eight, ten months, there's been an, at least one article in every single one of them about how it's going to have this huge effect on the historical profession and the teaching profession of that and, you know, some of the huge worries that, you know, it'll soon just be writing papers for students instead of them doing it themselves and things like that. So, you know, it's a concern, but I, I, I mean, I, I don't want it to do that for me. I, you know, I'd want to do the work myself, but, you know, and most people maybe don't though. I, like, you know, in the undergraduate uh, field or whatever, someone might be taking a history class because they're required to take one, so maybe they would want to use it, you know, and they don't care. But, you know, when you get to, like, the graduate level, the people that are taking those courses, that's all they're taking because that's what they want to do for a living. Mm -hmm. So I don't imagine that they would be openly cheating because um, it's something that they actually want to do, but I think it's a concern, you know. Well, I, um, I I don't know, you know, I mean, all I know is that for me, uh, I don't want to sit here writing a script all day long, you know? If, if it can write one that's better, 
or or at least write one that I can then go into it and correct it, change it, punch it up, whatever, and use a basic template, why not? You know? I mean, I don't feel I'm cheating the audience. It's just a goddamn promo. It's not going to change your life one way or the other. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, the information that's in it is accurate. So, I mean, yeah. what's well, doesn't matter if that thing wrote it or I wrote it. Or and, and by the way, I did written. not put in more than uh, the yeah. intersection with Amy Manuel, um, uh, uh, talk, uh, trivia, uh, social social um, commentary or whatever and it wrote that spot you know it, and it, it was uh, and not only it went online at some point and looked up amy's credentials as well hmm. and adapted it to that but it did it i mean i pushed send and i would <laughs> say within two seconds that thing was writing itself it was just coming down on the screen wow hmm. You know, and by the way, my breath smells better too. So, <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it was it was relevant, well done. I mean, the information was right, so yeah, nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. Oh wait, I also have one other story here, and I, do I have it in the computer? What did I do with it? I uh, got a story. Hmm. I found something out today. Oh, okay. And it was about England. Mm hmm. And uh, in England, you get uh, government medical. Mm -hmm. I guess it's free. Well, here's a guy who wants to get his hip taken. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, well, you're part of the England system. So we're going to have a meeting between you and your doctor to see what we ought to do about your knee that's not working well. Except by the only problem is it takes you two years before you could get to see your doctor. Just to even talk to him. Well, you know, it is amazing. Uh, how, how If you want to make an appointment with your doctor, say you've got something wrong with your, you know, your knee, whatever. Uh, I'm, my doctor, I seem to be able to get to pretty fast, but there are times that... Marjorie, her back was killing her, and she had to go see her back doctor, and she couldn't get a uh, 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 an appointment till three or four months later. Yes, Charlie. In 2013, when I ruptured a disc in my back, yeah. it took me four months to get an appointment with a specialist to do back surgery on my back hmm. before I could even see him. You know, but I hear chlorophyll works well. Yeah, but I mean, I'll tell you the thing that bothers <laughs> me is that people are in pain and they would like to get some relief tomorrow. Yeah. Right. You know, what? You, you can't, the doctor won't see you. Whatever happened to the doctor is in. The doctor isn't in. He's out more yeah. than he's in. Have 300 milligrams of chlorophyll three times a day. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> And call me Dr. in the morning. Al. Call me in the morning. No, but I mean, it, it 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 is amazing how long it takes to see a doctor. You know, even worse now. I mean, mm -hmm. I I was very lucky where my where my um, uh, prostate cancer was concerned, in that my doctor, the urologist, saw me pretty fast. Did the biopsy, found out that I had the cancer immediately recommended this doctor who was Rudy Giuliani's doctor by the way. Oh wow. I know, but he saved my life so to hell with it, you know. He also saved Rudy's life, but that's the downside. Yeah. Uh but uh and then he immediately had me in there within I'd say a week or two getting the first uh, the uh, the uh, what do you call it, the radiation. And then after the radiation was through, he was immediately there ready to do the, uh, um, uh, the uh, seed implantation. Mm. Uh, so I was very lucky. That was very fast. But I think yeah. where, where cancer is concerned, they try to do that fast because time could cause problems, you know. But, I mean, it's just, it's just that um, I know everything's so expensive these days. It's ridiculous, just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. 
You know. Now here's the thing that scares me. Uh, we just found a drug prescription plan that according to the guy who goes out and looks for insurance for us, <laughs> says is a full plan and whatever, and it's 20 bucks a month. Where the other one was going up to 80 bucks a month. And I want to know what I'm not getting. <laughs> with the, you, know, yeah, you, you automatically right. become suspicious, you know. But it's a, it, you know, it's also from a major company, so I can't, you know. But oh. I, what? Somebody want to say something? Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh, by the way, how, how, how's it going with uh, uh, Brian? Um, yesterday on the program took a COVID test. Because he had to go to work today and turn it in, right? Okay, so what happened? I'm still here. Oh, okay. So they, <laughs> they accepted your COVID test and said that's fine? Yeah, we're just seeing a spike in uh, Sweden right now, so we just want to be a little bit cautious. A spike so. where? We in Sweden, so we have a manufacturing plant in Sweden, but we, you know, we we do everything. We're very cautious. We we test wastewater, you know, so all the all the wastewater getting out of the building, we do sampling on that just to make sure that we're not seeing COVID there. And then we have a bunch of other testing we're doing. So yeah, so <laughs> I, I was going to ask him if if there was a, if we did catch people that had COVID or not, because sometimes we've done that. And then we do catch people that have COVID and send them home. So I don't know if anybody was had COVID or not. But are you the collector of the wastewater? <laughs> no. Oh, did you I want that job? You just stick your hand in there and <laughs> stick your hand in there and get a sample. Not me, baby. I'm retired. I thought I thought I didn't think they'd like you to put your hand in there. You'd have to use a cup. And then drink and it no, and see if it's Alan okay. Alan could wash his hands and he could put his hands in there. No, no, no. <laughs> After you take the cup out, you put it into a hypodermic needle and Trump could sell that to uh, curing COVID. Why is it every joke you come up with ends with Trump this or Trump <laughs> that? Or Republican this or yeah. Republican that. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Because he's an easy target. It's, Sorry. It probably is worth <laughs> mentioning, though, that, uh, you know... Joe Biden is apparently going to be, or on the path to being impeached <laughs> for, for taking, you know, uh, quote uh, from the chairman of the committee, Mr. Comer, uh, quote, we know they got tens of millions of dollars from bad people in bad countries. We don't know exactly what they did. We fear Joe Biden is compromised. And on this, you know, and then today... Uh, Trump signed an agreement to go into business with the Saudis uh, in their live golf yeah. operation to come to Doral for tens of millions of dollars for a couple of years. So there's Trump's organization taking money directly from the Saudi government. Yep, yep. But, you know, what's good for the goose is not necessarily good for the gander. Uh, well, right. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, you know, and if you, ask, if you ask the 9-11 Commission... Uh, they will tell you that the Saudi government basically funded the hijackers who flew the plane yep. on September 11th. Now, that commission's report was made public, and those lines were blacked out. But if you'll watch the 60 Minutes piece where they let people with the right clearance go into the skiff at the CIA and read the report, and then you ask them, did it say that the Saudi government did it? They say, um, I'm not allowed to say that uh, one way or the other. But when they're looking at the camera, they're going. <laughs> <laughs> so what they're saying is the Saudis did 9-11, basically? Well, I, I, the 9-11 Commission basically confirmed that the Saudi government yeah. had a lot of back channel involving and financed the the hijackers trips to America and their stays here and their training because we all know that Osama bin Laden was a Saudi mm -hmm. correct yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, very yeah. similar to the way that we see Hamas being propped up now by the Iranians 
same kind of relationship. Okay. Right. I mean, it's not as if, you know, their president goes on TV and talks about it, but that was how it worked. You know, and, you know, I'm not saying Trump is the first to get in business with the Saudis. Right. I mean, no, so the Bushes, the Bushes, I'm not saying don't, 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 don't talk about Biden being in business with. That's my yeah. point. Yeah. You know, I mean, who are the bad people that Biden were some business well, company? The thing is, China. the thing is, well, with this China, whole, with this whole, whole impeachment thing, they don't even have any proof of anything. Yeah, right. OK. And how do you go and ahead with something about. like this? You know, why go ahead with this and not take care of a of, of budget? OK. Uh, yeah. You know, why, why, uh, why, and you're going, you're going on vacation next week uh, because while they still need to have a budget taken care of and they haven't done that, but what they're going to do is they're going to stick around for the next week in order to pass border regulations. Well, and, uh, and that's only the Senate because the House has already adjourned and took off. Hey, the House well, is gone. The House isn't going to stick around, but the Senate... No, they're Senate. already gone. They've already left town. They adjourned. But the Senate is sticking around. Yeah. Yes. I guess, maybe. I, I think it was up, up in the air, but, you I know, mean, it, they can't take care of business and then think they deserve a break. Well, you know, you get a break when the work is done. I mean, I don't think Churchill said, time out. I, I got to go to the <laughs> south of France for a while. Oh, wait. It's <laughs> occupied by Nazi Germany. I guess I can't. Oh, damn. You know? I mean, you know, <laughs> there's a crisis. You got to take care of it. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, I just don't understand why uh, they can't. You know, they they can they can do a lot of things, but they can't seem to pass a budget. You know, I mean, it's it just it's amazing to me. They can they can spend all their time, waste all their time on this impeachment thing with Biden, which they know is going to come to nothing, because they have no <laughs> proof of anything. You know, I'll tell you the other thing quickly, and, and we have very little time left. But you know, the economy. Have you seen what the stock market's done for the last two days? It's higher than I made a lot of money in the last couple of days. Yeah. You know? Good. And by the way, have you seen gas prices lately? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, uh, you, well, you so so in California, but that's because you got yeah, all Brian three eighty nine at Costco on uh, down by Cottle three eighty nine. Wow. Wow. Yeah, look, I bought gas today for two dollars and sixty cents a gallon. And uh yeah. if you have a flex fuel vehicle, there are some stations around here that we're selling it for two dollars a gallon. Jeez. Wow. So two thirty nine here in Austin. Yeah. So yeah, that California below four to it for Austin. Behold, and below and, four bucks in California is And, and by the way, the cost of living <sighs> has gone down. So I mean who says Boy, Biden's doing a lousy job. The Republicans. Uh, Bill Meyer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what bad job? Right. I mean, for a guy who's doddering, according to everybody, yeah. right? He's certainly getting the job done. You know? Oh, well, he wasn't responsible for that. Uh, Trump was. Okay, fine. Yeah. I love it. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, hey, listen. Here, I'm playing the theme now, which you can't hear. And I've decided the reason you can't hear it is because Zoom prevents you from hearing it. Because they say think it's copyrighted music. That's what I've been told. Anyway, mm -hmm. Jeff, good hearing from you again tonight. Let's all see we can hear it, then they'll think. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, good to see you again. Yeah. And uh, Charlie, always yep. great to see you. Uh, Josh? Great having you here. Brian, thank your daughter for joining us tonight. <laughs> thank you for and thank you and tell her to thank her daddy for being here tonight, okay? And uh, then again, we also have the lovely and attractive Alan. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's pretty much our group for tonight. Uh, why don't you all give a big uh, wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. Bye. There they go. Listen, uh, Amy um, Manuel is next with the intersection. Uh, she will not be on via AI, uh, but she will be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show. It'll be on Facebook, and then I'll see you again next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend.